Hello everyone, bringing you a video today talking about this. Now this is a mannequin set up to represent a member of the 6th Krenz Brigade Kust, the 6th Border Brigade Coast, and this was a unit in East Germany which patrolled the Baltic coast and was responsible for similar duties to Grenstrup and elsewhere, but in that coastal environment. And there were obviously, um, there were patrol boats, but there were also uh, patrols on land, foot patrols, patrolling the coastline at this point. And that's what we're looking at here is the kit of a member of one of those foot patrols. Now, the Grenz Brigade Kust had kit which is recognisable as being fairly standard amongst the Grenztruppen, but also have a lot of naval influences on the insignia and some of the other kit as well. And we'll see that as we look at this in more detail. This particular mannequin is set up to represent a Meister or Master, uh, in the, which is obviously a, a Volksmarine rank. And this is essentially an NCO rank equivalent to NATO OR6, so sergeant, basically. And you'd see men in this sort of rank, maybe in specialist roles such as dog handlers and things of this nature. So that's basically what we're going for with the kit on the mannequin here. The most obvious naval influence looking at this from the front is in the field cap. And this is made of a navy blue canvas. You can see the national cockade at the front there. And this was standard for the Volksmarine. So it's the standard headgear for the Volksmarine, the standard field headgear. Uh, the field cap, basic standard design of field cap, but in navy blue cotton canvas as we have here. The uniform jacket, the field jacket itself is a, I think this is actually a late 1960s production, still in use in the early 1980s, which was the kind of time period we're looking at here, but being replaced of course by the 1980s design with the, con the concealed buttons on the arm pockets and so forth, but it wouldn't be out of place to still see some of these older field jackets in use at the time, still being issued out if they were in stores. So we have that here. You can see the two breast pockets here, no lower pockets in this instance, and we'll see details of the arm pockets and so forth as we move this round. One other thing to mention with the field jacket, of course, is that we have the collar liner buttoned in here. You, these are removable and washable, of course, and it just gives you that uh, layer of protection to the neck, stop this from rubbing. And it was a very common element of German uniform going back through the ages, basically, right the way back into the Victorian era of having collar liners buttoned into the uniform, a very common thing to see. The field gear is relatively stripped down. We have the suspenders here, as you can see, the uh, Y straps, as they're sometimes referred to. You can see that the straps, which would loop back to the field pack if it was being carried, have been looped onto the supporting straps here to keep them from flapping around, keep them out of the way. This is very common amongst Grenztruppen in general, a feature that we can see here. And then you obviously have the loops on these that hook around the belt to support the belt there and the same behind the ammunition pouch on this side. The standard webbing belt here, as you can see, the standard nylon belt with the gray painted buckle with the national emblem at the center there. The kit really is pretty standard in that regard. No bayonet is carried, as you can see here. And then the ammunition pouch is carried around on the right front hip here, as you can see. This is a mid-production example, two quick release opening tabs at the front there. And obviously this would not only necessarily be used to carry ammunition, you may carry a couple of spare magazines in there, possibly a cleaning kit, and sometimes flares were carried as well. So it depends on the specific operation as to what would be carried. We do have that single ammunition pouch on the front there, as you can see. One element of kit which is very synonymous with Grenz Truppen is the radio carried over the shoulder here. And this is a UFT 721, essentially what we might consider a police radio. They were used in industry as well and by the military in roles such as this. It's a short range radio, obviously with a loudspeaker microphone up here on the shoulder and the cord running down here. We'll have a look at more details of this as we turn the mannequin around. Uh, this was being replaced at the time with more up-to-date examples, but it wouldn't be uh, out of the question to see an example of one of these in use in the early 1980s, which is what we're going for with this mannequin. We'll start moving this around now and have a look at some of the other details. Looking at the right-hand side of this, we can see various details here. You can see the side profile of the field cap up there, and we can see the shoulder board here. And we'll get a close-up of this now. This is a full color shoulder board for a member of Grenz Brigade Kust, specifically a Meister or Master, an NCO rank equivalent basically to Sergeant in Western militaries. This is shown by the gold band all the way around the outside of the shoulder board and the single silver star. If this were a normal naval shoulder board, it would look much as it does, but you would have a blue band around the outside rather than the green. The Waffenfarbe, the arm of service color would be navy blue. As the shoulder board is showing rank for a member of the Grenz Brigade Kust, that Waffenfarbe is 
Grenz Troop and Green. So you have the green band around the outside and that's what shows this differentiation. So it's a naval shoulder board, but with the green Waffenfarbe to show Grenz Brigade Kust service. You can perhaps see a better view of the ammunition pouch here with the two quick release tabs, you can see there. And this attaches onto the belt, of course, using two belt loops at the rear. You can see the sleeve of the combat jacket here, the field jacket. We have the pocket there on the arm, little foliage loop sewn on here. And then at the cuff here, we have a little button tab to adjust in the cuff. You can actually see one of the holes here by which the buttons can be moved. These are attached with a split ring at the back. So the buttons can be taken off and altered to allow the cuff to be tightened in that little bit further. You can also see around the back here, we have the elbow reinforcement patch on the back of the arm there. Looking at the back of the mannequin here, we can see this is a slightly earlier example of the suspenders or Y straps. And we have the heart shaped joining piece at the rear here. You can see we have two attachment points here for attaching the field pack on the back as and when required. And you can see how this supports the back of the belt again, using the hook and the loop, which loops around the belt and hooks back onto itself here. Another naval element of the kit carried is the rain cape at the rear here. These were commonly carried by Grenztruppen, but those issued to Grenztruppen more generally were in a tan color. Again, with the naval equipment issued to Grenz Brigade Kust, we have a navy blue version carried here. Again, just another interesting element of the design. And this is attached to the back of the belt using two rubberized straps, which were really intended for carrying the, uh, the folded and rolled uh, Zeltplan around the outside of the field pack. So three of these would be used around the outside of the field pack to carry the rolled Zeltplan around the back if required. And obviously in this instance, just two of those are being used to carry this rolled rain cape on the back of the belt. As I say, something to very, very common to see. It's something that's very common to see amongst Grenztruppen more generally, but they would be carrying a tan version of the same rain cape. This is the naval issue version because of what we're looking at here specifically. And finally, moving around to look at the left-hand side here, we have the water bottle and cup carried here, just slung off the belt in the standard manner, round on the left hip. And in front of that, we have the radio. If we lift the arm out of the way here, a neat feature of this is that the antenna actually runs up the shoulder strap, attaches with this little plastic stud here, as you can see there. It's carried in a leather pouch. If I lift this up here, we have the various controls on top there. We'll probably have a look at this individually at some point in the future. Just buttons into this leather carrier, and then the leather strap runs over the shoulder here and that has a little buckle and strap which allows for the loudspeaker microphone to be carried up on the shoulder here so that has its own little strap and buckle which attaches it to the shoulder strap which means it's up at a convenient place to use when required so the radio carried over the shoulder there sometimes these were carried across the body it's not uncommon to see them just slung from one shoulder as we have here relatively short range but it would allow you to communicate potentially with a, a watch tower the local watch post and uh, obviously just radio back any reports as required. So that's carried around on the hip there. Nothing more to see on the arm here. The shoulder board is exactly the same as we saw before and the details on the arm are a mirror image of what we saw on the other side. So hopefully you found it interesting looking at this. I've certainly found it interesting putting the video together. It gives an element of colour to East German field uniform, which you don't often see, which I find interesting. And also the Grenz Brigade Kust itself is very interesting in terms of the duties it was carrying out, part of that board security force in East Germany, a very large border security force, obviously preventing people escaping and also keeping an eye on what was going on beyond East Germany's borders, uh, NATO operations in the Baltic in this instance, of course. So hopefully it's been interesting looking at this. It's certainly been interesting putting this video together. If you have enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more, please do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell, the notification button down below. That will of course alert you when I upload future videos. That's everything for this video. So until next time, bye for now.